All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Friday night. It is 7 o'clock Central Standard Time, and that can only mean one thing. Histo Chat is getting underway. Our weekly one-hour live stream. We are back. We're ready to go. Uh, Matt is here. Matt, what's up? How was, uh, how was your week? Gonna start the uh, the footage here. We're gonna we're gonna get things underway here. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me. And, uh, we're gonna start this week uh, looking at some brand new footage that Matt actually provided to us uh, of the kid. So we're starting off looking at the USS Kid as it appears in World of Warships. What's up, Wolf? How are you doing this week, my friend? How was uh how was your week? How was you guys Halloween? Did you guys do anything uh, for Halloween? Uh, I went to my bro's house, uh, hung out there. We barbecued. We hand out candy to the kids. You know, the usual fun stuff. Uh, Matt says, week was okay. Well, that's good. I think you, you built a Lego model uh, Halloween evening, did you not, Matt? Cool deal. Wolf says, doing great. I'm glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. We've got some all new footage here, uh, Wolf uh, of the Kid in action uh, as she appears in World of Warships. Uh, thanks to Matt, he was good enough to provide us some more footage of uh, my favorite destroyer here in action. Um, been a kind of a, a kid related uh, channel uh, today. I mean, our today's short was about the kid. This week's video was about the kid, and we have uh, some new footage of the kid here for the live stream. Wolf says, I watched the first two Halloween movies on Halloween. Excellent. Um, is that your first time watching them, or have you seen them before? I've, I've truly lost count how many times I've seen those movies. Excuse me, said so had to uh, grab something there. Ahmed says, bought the next one today to build. Actually, it's a Lotus. Okay, cool. Which um which model did you build on a uh, Halloween evening? Then when Wolf, how's your uh, your model of uh our favorite dreadnought coming along? I know you put some pictures in the Discord. Well, that ship just kind of got stuck there for a minute. I've seen the original, uh, but it was my first time seeing the second one. And referring to uh, Halloween 2. Um, well, what did you think of Halloween 2? And we're, we're talking about the original Halloween 2 here. Not the uh, that abomination that Rob Zombie did uh, in the early 2010s. Uh, Matt built the C8 Corvette on Halloween evening. Nice. Well, as you can see, um, October is over. We are back to our regular scheduled uh, Histo Chat uh, program here. Joining me this week, we have, of course, Titanic. We have the USS North Carolina. And we have the Mauritania. As if there's a Toyota Supra in the discontinued section, I may try to find it. Excellent. Uh, Wolf says, uh, for the Texas, uh, coming along pretty well. I plan on working on her after the stream. I have so much photo etch to put on. Oh, boy. Yeah, good luck with photo etch. I mean, the, you can't... Uh, you can't appreciate enough the the you know the detail in the photo etch and how much more real it makes your ships look. But that stuff looks like it's going to be a pain to uh, to deal with. So while I'm thinking about it, um, and I know I've been announcing it, uh, the live stream two weeks from today, uh, the entire stream is going to be about this ship right here, HMHS Britannic. Uh, Titanic's third and final sister in the Olympic class um, on November 
uh, I believe it's the 22nd. She was sunk on November 21st, 1916. Um, our live stream is going to be November 22nd. That entire live stream is going to be dedicated to the Britannic. We're going to be looking at um, Britannic, patroness of the Mediterranean, and we're going to watch the sinking in real time and discuss it. Uh, Wolf says, I like Halloween too, but I felt like the theme was a downgrade from the original. Well, yeah, but to be fair, nine times out of ten, every sequel is a downgrade from the original. I would say, though, for me personally, um, as far as the Halloween sequels, it is by far the best one. It's still canon to me. That's not to say I didn't enjoy um, the 2018 movie, but... For me, the original Halloween 2 will always be the true sequel. Um, so that's my thoughts on, on that particular movie. And uh, I know I announced this in the Discord today uh, while I'm thinking about the models. So after the better part of a year, I have finally, oh, excuse me for a second. Got the case of the yawns again tonight. Um, after almost the entire year of searching, I have finally scored the Ravel 1 to 700 of the RMS Olympic. And I cannot tell you how thrilled I am about that. And what we got here. Oh. Nice little close-up view of the ship. That boat almost hit me. Okay. But yeah, here, here we got a nice little uh, pan around the ship here. How much was it? I'll tell you in Discord. <laughs> uh, it was not cheap. I will say that much. But it's the first time one pops up. Of course, I found it on eBay. And it was see, three people, it said, had already looked at it. I don't know if they were waiting uh, for the price to be lowered or what the deal was. But it was get it or who knows when or if another one is going to pop up at some point in the future. So I just rolled the dice and went ahead and got the thing. Um, also, I am planning to, and I've already started buying some photo etch, not photo etch, um, some 3D printed pieces to uh, convert a Ravel 1 to 700 Titanic into Britannic. So once that's done, I can build yet another uh, 1 to 700 Titanic Ravel, and I will have the entire Olympic class in 1 to 700 scale. That was a dream of mine when I first decided to start building models. I want all of the Olympic class, and now it looks like I'm going to get my wish. So it's still going to take some time for me uh, to get everything, um, for the Britannic, that is. And it'll take time for me to have them all three complete and where I can display them here on the shelf on the live stream. But it is now going to be a reality. And you guys just don't know how thrilled I am about that. Oh, I love this side shot of the ship using its anti-aircraft right here. This is pretty amazing. But yeah, I cannot tell you guys how much or how excited I am to be able to have the entire Olympic class. Man, it says when you uh, when you see a rare item that you really want, you got to jump on it. Absolutely, and that's why I did it. Because who, like I said, who knows when or if ever another one was going to appear. So I just I went ahead and rolled the dice. Uh, Wolf says, I don't know why it always seems the models we want the most are always the most expensive, because we have expensive taste. <laughs> the good thing, though, I mean, and I I love the warships just as much as you, Wolf, but um, I know you, 
you like the ocean liners, but I don't think you're quite as much into them as I am. And ocean liners are so much harder to come by than warships. Because I mean, really think about it. You can find, you know, an infinite amount of Titanic models. You can find the Texas, the Alabama, the North Carolina, you know, so on and so on. How many models do you see of the Queen Mary, uh, Aquitania, Mauritania, Lusitania? There's, there's barely anything out there for ocean liners. So when you see one, you really have to jump on it. Um, let's see, Matt says, I'm on the hunt for a matching Seren Vega guitar amp speaker kit. Uh, I can't help you there, dude. <laughs> I keep keep doing what I do. You know, I, I kept checking eBay every so often. And uh, I just random chance that I checked eBay today for the Olympic model and one actually popped up. And I thought about it for a minute because uh, it was not cheap. It was expensive. But in the end, I just I had to pull the trigger on it. And yes, the kid does have amazing anti-aircraft. It looks like you're going to cap this uh, this control area, too. Lo well, says, I've noticed the lack of ocean liner models out there, which really sucks. Would love a model of Queen Mary. There are, well, there are a few Queen Marys out there. Um, check eBay. Now, again, because the ocean liners are so much more rare than... Uh, warships, you know, you might have to pay a pretty penny for it. But uh, the Queen Mary uh, model that I've got, that's where I got it from. I, it was off of eBay. I think I paid, I want to say I paid 60 bucks for the Queen Mary that I have. And I love that model. I think it's, as far as the work that I have done on any of my models, I think the, uh, the work I did on the Queen is some of the best work I've done as far as my models. The Queen and the North Carolina right there are tied, in my view, as for the best job I've done on any of my ships. Just looks, look, there, here we go, here we go, that anti-aircraft fire again. No, uh, well, for uh, for that uh, for the queen, that was not a terrible price. And I want to say, for the Mauritania there, I think I paid eighty, if I remember right. There were like three or one, two or three models of the Mauritania on eBay that were left when uh, at the time I bought the Mauritania. Let me let me grab the Mauritania real quick. And see, even the models like this that are still uh, in existence, like this Mauritania one, this is a 1 to 600 by Airfix. And I actually, I did a real, I really think I did a great job on this model as well. Um, there is a mistake I made on it, but I'm not going to say what it is because <laughs> you never, you can't unsee it once you do. But um, she looks great. Uh, I'm really happy with the job I did on this ship as well. And... Yeah, I just, now I just need a Lusitania model, which those are, I have not seen a Lusitania model for cheaper than $279. And if you're wondering, no, I did not pay that much for the Olympic today. So yeah, that's Mauritania. Let me go grab the queen real quick so you can take a look at her. Yeah, so here's the queen, and for, uh, I think, 60 bucks, uh, I paid for the queen here, and she looks absolutely stunning. I am, I am so proud of the job that I did on the queen here. So if you can find this one, um, like I said, I think I paid about 60 bucks for it. You know, you put the time into it, um, she came out fantastic. So, yeah, uh. I, I got no complaints about this particular model either. <clears throat> uh, 
<laughs> that's huge. Yes, yeah, she is pretty huge. She is the largest of my model ships. Trumper needs to make some ocean liners. They already have Titanic. Uh, they are... I've been hearing for a year now that they were going to make one to two hundreds of Olympic and Britannic, and I've even seen pictures of them on their website. But since, uh, and that was at the beginning of the year, but since then, um, it has come down, like those pictures and information is no longer there. So I don't know if they're not doing them anymore or what. But yeah, I would love to see. I think there is more interest in, in, the, in the old ocean liners than what these model makers realize. I think they would sell a whole lot better than they think, you know, these people think they would. Well, that must be me right behind Matt right here coming up in that big monstrous Iowa ship. Let's see. Uh, Mauritania is such an underrated ship. She certainly is. We're talking, oh yeah, look at that, look at that big beast. Oh, that's the North Carolina that I'm in. Right here, uh, I'm past, how am I passing up the kid? Matt must be going at like, oh yeah, he's going at half speed. There's no way the out, North Carolina can outrace the kid. But uh, Mauritania, Mauritania is very much an underrated ship. So fun facts about the Mauritania. She held the blue ribbon for 20 years. I mean, that alone tells you pretty much everything you need to know. I forget, it's either her or the Queen Mary held that for the second longest amount of time of any ship. Mauritania served in world war one she was uh she was a hospital trip a trip a hospital ship she was a troop ship towards the end of her career she actually ended up being a cruise ship which uh that kind of sucked but yeah those are just a few fun facts about the mauritania in fact when canard decided that they were going to retire the mauritania and scrap her franklin roosevelt who was the sitting United States president at the time, wrote a letter of protest to the Cunard line saying that she should not be scrapped. If anything, they, he felt like the worst, you know, best case scenario, uh, instead of scrapping her, would be like you basically sink her and make her an artificial reef. reef. That would be, in his, his opinion, more respectable than scrapping the ship. But unfortunately, they did scrap the ship um, to me, ultimately, it should have been a museum ship. But, you know, those are just a few things about the Mauritania. You know, she's... I've always said this. Um, well, let me read your comment real quick. Yeah, we're playing real people, so I was hanging back instead of going full tilt. I get that, Matt. Actually, let me get this thought out real quick, uh, and then I'll, I'll read some more of the chat. Um... I've always seen Olympic and Titanic, Lusitania and Mauritania as being so, uh, their lives were so, they paralleled each other in so many ways. If you think about it, um, Titanic, the most famous ship of her class, arguably the most famous ship of all time. What happened? She sunk. And as a result, she is the more, most famous ship in her class. Uh, Lusitania sunk. Granted, different reasons, different circumstances, but sunk all the same. She's the more famous ship of her class because she was sunk. The Olympic and the Mauritania both had 20, plus, no, 20 plus year careers both served in World War I, both were scrapped at the same time in the 30s. And if you don't know, uh, my, if you're not a ship nerd like we are, chances are you've probably never even heard of Olympic and Mauritania. And that's just, an, that's just sad because, you know, we, we, we place so much more emphasis on these ships that met with tragedy. Well, what about the ships that had long successful careers. Why, why not recognize them too? And that's what I, you know, that's one of the things that I love about sometimes 
I think we had this discussion not too long ago in the Discord. I was, uh, what's your favorite White Star ship? And I, I usually say Titanic because Titanic is the ship that got me into ships. But Olympic, she's the only one in her class to have a long, successful career. She's a World War I veteran. She has so much more rich history, and she was a successful ship. A lot of times I find myself thinking, I like the Olympic more than the Titanic, and for those reasons. But anyway, let me get back onto the chat here. Uh, let's see. Uh, interesting fact, there isn't a single model of USS Nevada made by a big company such as Trumpeter, Ravel, Airfix, and Hobby Boss. I did not know that. Uh, then he says, that's one of my biggest problems with uh, the community. I'm guessing you're referring to like the ocean liner community. And uh, it's, it's really not, in, if that is what you're saying, it's not just the ocean liner community, it's the public in general. I mean, think about it. You know, if, if James Cameron made uh, a movie in 1997 called Olympic and the ship didn't sink, do you think it's going to make the box office money that Titanic made? No. Definitely not. And again, that just goes, I don't know what it is about us as humans. Um, we're more fascinated with the tragedy. I, I don't, I can't, I don't know. I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I can't explain it. That's just, that's just the way things are. But, oh, oh look, here I come around the mountain again. Apparently Matt's hanging out close to me throughout this, uh, this match here. <laughs> if that ship reveals itself, I'm going to blow that thing into smithereens. See what happens here at the very end. I think I just fired a shot at it. But yeah, that's that's my thoughts on uh, all that to say. Uh, these are my thoughts on why we don't see um, you know as many ocean liner models as maybe we should. Yeah, people seem to find tragedy more interesting, which is strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's exactly what it is. I, I I can't explain it. I don't know why. I think in in the case of the Titanic, um, I would guess that it's because it was uh, the worst peacetime maritime disaster or one of the worst ever in human history. I mean, think about it. Even Lusitania. Lusitania was uh, the victim of war. You know, she was torpedoed and sunk during World War I. And Lusitania is popular, uh, you know, in history, but even that ship its popularity isn't as great as Titanic's. And I think, again, that just goes to uh, Titanic was a peacetime disaster that should not have happened. Everything about that disaster was completely avoidable, and yet it happened all the same. And people will can debate from now to the end of time, you know, what could have been done differently, what should have been done differently, um, we know all this stuff, so I'm not going to really get into all of that. <clears throat> all right, yeah, I kind of went on a tangent there, so uh, pardon. <laughs> Let's see what uh, uh. Well, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of Titanic. I like the design, and she's the reason I'm interested in ships. But I kind of got tired seeing everyone talking about Titanic and not something else. And I get that. And uh, that's well. And see, that's the great thing about um, being uh, interested in more in ships in the way that we are. You know, uh, for example, we, you and I, I mean, we do this all the time in Discord. We can have conversations about 
all kinds of different ships, be it other ocean liners, be it warships. We talk more about warships than we do ocean liners, but we can have those discussions because it's a topic we're fascinated about. And I think this week I posted a picture of Titanic in the Discord, and that's, I don't remember the last time I've mentioned Titanic in the Discord. I really don't. It, it's been that long. That's because, and we, and I attribute that to, you know, us being fascinated with ships. We know a lot more ships. We know a lot uh, of history about other ships. So we can have those discussions. Well, says, I'm on a Discord server, and I swear everyone just talks more about the Titanic's wreck and more worried about the ship's current condition rather than a ship that's preserved and still afloat. Oh, I, I don't doubt that at all. Now, I, I will say, and I don't know how we can do it, but I really think that if there is a way to preserve the wreck and stop it from being deteriorated, and I don't know that there is a way, there probably isn't, but if there ever is a way where we can do that, I really think we need to do it. Um, until then... I am very much of the opinion uh, that we need to uh, recover as much artifacts off of the wreck as possible and put them in museums uh, while we still have the chance to do so. I'm firmly of the belief in that. But yes, I also, of course, I'm very much also with you where we need to pay attention to and preserve the ships that we do still have. Um, for example, um, the SS United States. That thing is in such horrible condition. There's a lawsuit going on with it right now. Um, the, uh, the dock that it's moored at, um, the owners of that dock, uh, according to the SS United States Conservancy, the owners of the dock doubled the price of the rent during uh, Corona to where it's like 16,000 something a day that they have to pay in rent to this dock. They can't pay it. And according to the Conservancy, they, uh, the dock violated the terms of the lease and there's a lawsuit going on about it right now. But think about that ship still exists. We could preserve that ship. We could make it into a tourist attraction, into a hotel, into a museum ship, all the things that the Queen Mary is. And as, and as much as I love the Queen Mary, that is my favorite Cunard ship, why is it we can, and props to Long Beach, by the way, because they're the real, oh, look, Matt sunk a ship here with the kid. Um, why is it the city of Long Beach, and props to them, by the way, we can preserve and, and you know, appreciate a British ocean liner, but the fastest ocean liner in history made by us the SS United States it's like it's an afterthought and it shouldn't be that way uh, well says I feel Britannic has more of a chance of being saved than Titanic um, I agree completely with that and actually uh, the Britannic's wreck is in much much better shape than what the Titanic's wreck is, and not just because of the way that the ships, uh, the two ships sunk. Um, there is a documentary, uh, and I forget the name of it. Um, I've got it on my iTunes wish list, um, where they go into the details about the reasons why uh, the Britannic wreck is actually in a whole lot better shape than Titanic's wreck. I'm going to have to get the name of that, and I'll let you know what it is uh, in the Discord. Matt says, I wish the, they would recover the Marconi system. Well, they, they were supposed to do that, and, uh, and we're talking about Titanic's Marconi system. Um, they, were so, they were all set to do it, uh, from what I remember, and I forget what company or uh, whatever was going to do it, but... Uh, Lawsuits came into effect because there are people who don't want anything taken off of the ship. So uh, it was dropped. They, they abandoned uh, the, attempt, <clears throat> excuse me, the attempt to recover the system, which is a tremendous shame because 
uh, the roof currently on the wreck of the Titanic, the, the Marconi Systems roof is actually caving in right now. And it's going to be a slow deteriorating process, but it is happening. Once that happens, we're not going to be able to get that. Why let it go? You know, wh why? Why not recover it? That belongs in a museum. I mean, we recovered the Titanic's whistles. And granted, uh, the, the rule has always been you recover stuff from the debris field and not things off of the actual ship. The, uh, the whistles were in the debris field. They've actually got the whistles. Uh, well, one set of the whistles. They restored them. They even blew them, the whistles, in the late 90s. They blew them one time, but with air, not with steam. Uh, they did it like once or twice. Then they put them in a museum, and that's where they currently are. And it says, I wish the kids tore free loaded faster. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And by the way, if you haven't noticed, we are looking at the USS Texas now. Um, we're going to watch here for a round or two, if I believe, if I remember correctly. Wolf says, SS United States being empty could easily be converted into a museum of ocean liner and American history. Absolutely. Um, and, and going back to the Queen Mary, the Queen Mary is a museum. The Queen Mary is a restaurant. The Queen Mary is a hotel. The SS United States could be all of these things. You know, why are we not trying to, we, we, again, you know, and I'm not knocking the Queen. Again, I love the Queen Mary, but why are we concerned with preserving a British ocean liner in the United States, but not an American liner, which also happens to be the fastest ocean liner that has ever been built? No ship before or since, and I emphasize the since, is faster than the SS United States. She still holds the blue ribbon today. Uh, Wolf says humans have a bad problem of preserving stuff. It, it depends on what it is. I mean, really, if you look at our warships, we've got a ton of our warships uh, as museums. You know, look look at the Texas is getting uh, taken care of right now. We've got the kid. We've got battleships. I mean, aircraft carriers, you name it, we got it. Uh, speaking of which... Um, I was thinking about this earlier. I got I got a trivia question for Matt. Matt, if you're uh, if you're uh, willing to uh, participate here, I got a quick question for you, Matt. Since we're on this talk about um, all these ships uh, being preserved and whatnot, Matt, do you know how many Iowa class ships were built? Now, Wolf, you don't answer. I want to see. I want to. I want to see if Matt knows this. Uh, this question. I know you know it. I want to see if Matt knows the answer to this question. I will. I will give him a second to uh, to think about it. While we uh, we watch the Texas kick some butt here. Can't wait to get my model of the Texas, by the way. That's that's going to be on my agenda for next year. Oh, I just took a hit right there. Matt uh, says four. You are correct, Matt. Uh, four Iowas were built. Now, there was supposed to be a fifth Iowa that was going to be the USS Kentucky, uh, but that ship was not completed. And Matt says, that was a random guess I don't remember. Well, you guessed correctly. Um, the Iowa, the New Jersey, the Wisconsin, and the Missouri. Those were the four Iowa-class ships. There was supposed to be a fifth one, the USS Kentucky. Uh, they started construction on the hull, um, but it was never completed, and the hull was eventually scrapped. So uh, I've got one more question for you, Matt, uh, concerning the Iowa ships. So out of the four, yeah, Wolf, Wolf says, rip Kentucky. Yes, yeah, so sadly, yes. Out of the four Iowa ships, Matt, do you uh, know how many of them 
are still in existence as museum ships. How many Iowa class ships out of the four are museum ships? Pat says, I remember the Iowa and the Wisconsin. I couldn't remember the others. Well, actually, the Missouri is the most famous Iowa of them all. So, and, and yeah, you know, of course, you know, the, the Missouri still exists. So, you know, for sure, there's at least one. The Missouri uh, is at Pearl Harbor. You know, they were not going to scrap the Missouri. But do you know, out of the four, how many of them still exist? And Wolf, I know you know, so don't answer. <laughs> Matt says, aren't they all museums? You, sir, are correct. All four Iowas still exist. All four Iowas are museum ships. The, um, the Iowa herself is in California, about an hour away, about, or maybe less than an hour from the Queen Mary. So if you ever... Uh, in that area, you can check out the Queen Mary and the Iowa probably in the same day, depending on how long you plan to spend at both ships. Of course, we know Mighty Mo is at Pearl Harbor and uh, New Jersey. I'll give you one guess where New Jersey is. And uh, the Wisconsin is in Virginia, I believe. And, uh, Wolf, if you want to fact check me on that, I'm almost positive uh, Wisconsin is in Virginia. So uh, if you are ever in uh, those areas, you can see one of the Iowas. Wolf says, I've been playing World of Warships lately and I've been using light cruisers and I've developed a new tactic. Sweet. I wish you had it on PC. That way you could play uh, play Warships with Matt and myself. Matt actually uh, plays the Destroyers a lot, um, and I play the Battleships. Will says you're right with all of those. Okay, cool. Yep, so New Jersey with New Jersey. Wisconsin's in Virginia. Mo is in Pearl Harbor. And Iowa's in Southern California. Speaking of which, um, Wolf, while you're here, because um, uh, my trip to see the Texas, while we're looking at the Texas, is right around the corner. Um, I will also be touring uh, a destroyer and a submarine that are basically right down the street from the, where the Texas is. Uh, the USS Cavalla, which is a submarine, and the USS Stewart, which is a destroyer. Wolf, I know you know the answer to this. What is the name of the Japanese carrier that was sunk by the Kavala? He says, my new tactic evolves charging battleships, and once I'm close to them, torpedo them, and then circle them over and over again, and the slow things can't do anything about it. <laughs> That says, I'm learning the carriers, but I don't really like it. Well, if you don't like them, man, don't play them. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get any more carriers than the only one you have if uh, you're not enjoying playing them. <laughs> Destroyer Escort. That's a good, that's a good strat, Wolf. Um, but beware, as I'm sure you may know, um, because I've done this uh, with battleships, you can get, as with a cruiser, uh, here we go, here's a big, beautiful Iowa. You can get one-shotted by a battleship in, if you're a cruiser or a destroyer. So, you know, that's a cool strat, but, you know, you are taking a risk on toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with a battleship. Uh, so uh, my question about which... Uh, which carrier did the Kabbalah sink? Uh, Wolf says, I'm pretty sure it was the Shokaku. 
Matt says, I want to give the carriers more time before I decide to sell it. Yeah, uh, and again, if it's not your thing, you know, don't worry about it. Now, see here, we're looking at the Iowa. Look in the background. You see the Statue of Liberty, and you see an ocean liner back there. That's a three-funnel ocean liner, and I swear that is got to be the Queen Mary. I'm almost positive that's the Queen. If, it, if it's not the Queen Mary, the only other ship I think it, it could possibly be would be the Normandy. Uh, Wolf says, yeah, I've learned that the hard way, but I call it risk and reward. Oh, definitely. Yeah, like I said, it is a risk. Because, I mean, look at, look at this big, beautiful beast right here. You know, she has the ability to one-shot you. Matt says, the plan only works if they shoot and they miss. Then you can go in with the torps before they reload. Yeah, because that's, that's the worst thing about uh, playing battleships in this game is... The main battery reload times are terrible. I don't know if they were like that in real life. I'm assuming it is. But, man, is it terrible. I, will say, I fled from so many battleships while playing light cruisers, but I normally prey on them when they're distracted by another battleship. See, usually, when I am playing, and I, I, I play the battleships mostly, I like to focus on a destroyer or a cruiser if I see they're singling me out I will do my utmost to take them out before I even start worrying about battleships because I know that my destroyers and my cruisers are also going to torp the hell out of their battleships too All right, I need something to drink guys my throat's drying up uh, give me a sec I'll be right back All right, sorry about that. <laughs> Looks like I'm about, no, I was about to say, I'm going to sink a battleship right here, but nope, it got sunk before I could hit it. So, <clears throat> I got to re reposition myself here, sorry guys. Yeah, I will probably going to hop on uh, and play some of this uh, tonight after the stream is over. But yeah, it, it's a shame you don't have it on uh, PC, Wolf. It'd be awesome uh, for you to be able to play the game with us. Oh, Wolf says, I got a quiz. How many U.S.? 
World War II aircraft carriers are left, and what are their names? Whew. Uh, that, for, for me, Wolf, that is a tough one. I am not as familiar with the carriers as I am uh, the battleships. Um, hmm, well, let me think if I can, you see if I can think of any. No, no, not Nimitz. Nimitz is too new. Um, I think the Midway was built after World War II. Was the Yorktown one of them? Did the Yorktown serve in World War II, or was the Yorktown uh, post-World War II? You probably have talked about them on Discord, Wolf, and I'm just, I'm drawing a blank right now. Off the top of my head, I, I can only think of maybe the Yorktown. No, you can count Midway. Okay. I couldn't remember. I know, uh, if I remember right... Yorktown is World War II. Okay, so uh, so I, I got at least two. Um, does is Enterprise still out there? I'm trying to think what else could there be. Okay, so Enterprise is Enterprise still exists. Okay, so Midway, Yorktown, and Enterprise. Oh, Enterprise was not preserved. Okay. That's true. She wasn't preserved. You're right about that. They tried, but the Navy wouldn't have it. Yeah, that's that's true. Okay, so I got two of the five. Matt, there's more, there was more than one USS Enterprise. You might be looking at the wrong uh, ship. That's the thing with, with warships. Um, warships aren't like ocean liners in the sense that one, you know, there's rarely uh, ocean liners that have the same name, Where, but it, it's a lot more common in, uh, in warships for multiple ships to get the same name. Uh, Wolf says, in some alternate universe she was. You know, speaking of an alternate universe, Wolf, I don't know if you saw this. I posted it uh, in Discord late this afternoon in the movies channel about a movie called The Final Countdown. And it is a movie where the real USS Nimitz was used in the filming of this of this movie and the ship is conducting training exercises uh, in the Pacific now this is I want to say uh, the movie was uh, I think takes place at the time it was filmed which is about night late 70s early 80s she's caught in some type of vortex and travels back in time and the date that she travels back in time to is December 6th, 1941. I'm not going to tell you anything else about the movie. But I would imagine it might just pique your interest. <laughs> uh, Yellow Wolf says there's three Enterprise carriers, the World War II one, the Cold War one, which was scrapped, and the third is under construction. Okay, so there was two and there will be a third. Okay, I'm going to need you also to name to me what ships did I not get for your uh, your aircraft carrier question. Uh, I got the Midway, I got the Yorktown, uh, and I know I'm going to feel stupid when you tell me what the other ones are, but go ahead. Uh, 
hit me with it. What what are what are the three that I'm missing? Because I I cannot think of them. It is definitely interesting, um, Wolf. Um, it, if you have Peacock, uh, I know it's on Peacock. I don't know what else it's on. Um, it, it's an it's a, it's an interesting movie. Basically, a good like what if scenario. USS Hornet, Intrepid, and Lexington. Okay, see, the Hornet was on the tip of my tongue, um, but I didn't say it. Oh, I'm going to beach myself right here because I know this ship ain't going to turn in time. Or is she? Is she going to turn in time? Nope. Well, I guess it's a good thing because I didn't get hit with those torpedoes. Okay, I was getting the I was the hornet was on the tip of my tongue. I did not say it because I would think I was getting it confused with the wasp. So I know the wasp the wasp got sunk. Um I forget when, but I know the wasp got sunk, but for some reason I was confused in my head, I was confusing the wasp and the hornet. Hornet is in Cali, Lexington is in Texas, and Intrepid is in New York City. Where exactly do you do you know where exactly is the Lexington uh, and is it a museum ship? Can we tour it? Because uh, I will be in the Lone Star State um, very, very soon. Depending on where it's at will determine whether or not I make an attempt to go see it. Oh yeah, I'm just taking it. I am taking a beating here trying to back out. Probably didn't do so well on that one. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, Wolf, I think we talked about that as well. I want to say, isn't the Lexington like really far south texas like not too far from the uh the border with mexico yeah okay yeah corpus christi yeah that's a bit too far out the way for me to travel so uh it's not gonna be uh on my list at this time when I go to Texas. That's something I'll have to uh, to plan for some other time. But I do, I, I really want to go see the Yorktown uh, and and not just for the York, Yorktown but also just to check out Charleston in general because I mean uh, the Yorktown is not too far from Fort Sumter and you know you know you know your American history, you know the significance of Fort Sumter, so I would really like to check that out. And of course, check out uh, the Yorktown at the same time. Fun fact, she was the final Essex-class carrier to be decommissioned. I would love to see her, but uh, we're not going to happen this trip. She's made a museum ship in, I want to say, 92 or 94. Yes, Laffy, uh, Laffy is there as well. I, I knew there was another ship uh, with the Yorktown. I forget which one it was. But yeah, I can see both of those. You can see Fort Sumter, all that at the same time. I want to say I did read about it, but I do need to, I need to refresh in my memory on it again. You know, I, I know of the Laffey, uh, and I want to say I briefly read about it, but uh, yeah, I, I need to read about it again. Oh, I'm about to get torqued here. Uh, we're going to hit by two of them. So let's see, we've got about 11 minutes or so left before uh, the stream ends. There's a World War II submarine, but she was scrapped in 2022. 
Um, there is a Russian uh, submarine parked right next to the Queen Mary, but the thing is in serious disrepair. Uh, you cannot tour it. Uh, I think the only reason it's still sitting there is because from uh, it might be more expensive to try and tow the thing out or scrap it than you know it's easier to just leave it there I guess yeah we are just a, a burning Iowa here Laffy's nickname was so cool. The ship that would not die. I dig it. You could kind of apply that to, new, to the New Orleans as well, if you think about it. She lost 150 feet of her bow. They sailed her backwards to a port to where she could be repaired. She would not sink. Yeah, submarines always end up in pork and yeah, usually yes however um you know there there are uh wow i'm gonna get torped again here four more tarps that's six torpedoes uh sustained by this iowa and uh she's not still not going down we um that's what's going to be cool about the cavala uh when i get to see that because uh, she's obviously well preserved I'm going to get torped again here. Well, maybe. Let's see what happens. Pretty sure that one's going to hit. Yep. So that's what, six or seven torps. And she's still not down. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, Gavala is well preserved. Uh, the drum is well preserved. If you ever go visit the USS Alabama, you can tour the drum, and uh, it's still in pretty good shape. Well, it's actually it's in very good shape. Now, the only downside with the drum that uh, the only time it ever got damaged, uh, coincidentally, um, that I can remember, was actually Hurricane Katrina. Um, it took damage during the hurricane when, uh, as a museum ship, of course. But, you know, it was saved and repaired, and you can go on the ship and tour it. Now, the drum, like the Cavala, is on dry land. It does not float. It's not in, like, a little uh, thing of water like the Alabama is. You know, the, the Alabama actually, it looks like it's in Mobile Bay uh, floating, but it's actually not. Because uh, I asked him, is the ship actually floating? And, no, it's there's a platform it sits on, and... Uh, kind of like the kid, but it's surrounded by water, so it just looks like it's floating. Yeah, subs are great when they're alone, but when you add extra ships, they always get ignored. Well, with the exception of the Drum and the Cavala, because, uh, again, um, both of those ships are museum ships with other ships, and they have been well taken care of. And see, I, I, I wonder also... Is it easier for a ship to be preserved when it's out of water than what it is when it's in water? Because it seems like if it's just resting on dry land, not rusting, resting on dry land, um, there's less chance of it getting like hull damage like the kid is getting from uh you know rising up and down with the river and getting the bottom of it damaged i mean it's always sitting there it never moves this iowa's got hit by seven torpedoes and it's still not down now tell me these ships weren't tough And it says, I guess it could be about the same. Matt, are you joining me on warships uh, this evening? Or uh, you going to do something else when the stream ends? 
We've got about six minutes left. I think this will probably be a good place to go ahead and start to wrap things up. Um, so as always, I will go over uh, the content schedule. Um, all times are central standard time. Monday through Friday, we have a quiz question of the day that's usually six, uh, ship related. Uh, those are at 9 a.m. Central Standard. Uh, random uh, poll of the day, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Uh, uh, video short of the day at 11 a.m. Monday through Friday. We have one weekly video that comes out at 7 a.m., a full length video. And our live stream is one hour every evening uh, on Fridays at 7 o'clock for one hour. Let's see, Wolf says, subs are normally out of water because they can survive it, but larger warships like Kid or a battleship like Texas would have hull trouble, so they need to stay in water. And that's, I kind of thought so, but I just wasn't really sure about that. Uh, Matt says he'll probably join me. Uh, Wolf says, I think it weakens their hulls, but subs are different for some reason. I can't remember. It's Yeah, I've always, I've thought about it, but I've never really looked into it. Uh, it's, it's something I really need to look into at some point. Just uh, Maybe I'll just ask the people when I go to uh, see the Kavala. Because remember, the USS Stewart uh, next to the Kavala, that's a destroyer, and it's also out of water. So... I don't know. I, I, it's something I've wondered about, and I'm just going to, if I remember to ask, um, when I go see those ships, I'm going to ask them. All right, so, yep, that's going to do it this week. Um, wow, what a great discussion we had this week. I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation with you guys. Um so, Wolf, thanks for joining us. Matt, thanks for joining us. Matt, thanks for giving us some new footage of the sh uh, of the uh, the kid to look at. Always appreciate you guys coming and hang out with me. It gives me somebody to talk to. <laughs> this would be kind of boring if, uh, if I didn't have someone to bounce ideas off of, you know. So, uh, again, uh, we'll be back next Friday at 7 p.m. In two weeks will be our live stream of the anniversary of the sinking of Titanic's third sister, the HMHS Britannic. Uh, that whole stream will be all about that. So I uh, hope you guys will join us for that. Put your learning caps on. Uh, I know a fair uh, amount about the Britannic, and I can't wait to talk to you guys about it. So thanks again for watching, everyone. And as always, until the next time, you know the drill. Drive safely. <laughs>